Like summer ween demands that I go book shopping. It's beautiful. Here we go. Okay. That's, it's like, the, it's so good. Like, the next time I tell you guys, I'm gonna daily vlog in real time, you tell me no. This is the little library, and here are all the books. What Summer Wayne has taught me is that evidently I am interested in horror now. I think I need to be done with super, super scary things for like a millisecond. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Hello, spooky friends. Welcome to the sixth day of summer ween, but also technically the fourth and fifth days. Okay. Hello, spooky friends, and welcome to another kind of daily vlog. It's not really daily vlogging at this point, is it? No. While I was taking a pause from daily vlogs, I did end up finishing The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know how I feel about this book. <laughs> I would say, arguably, this is the most shocking twist that Riley Sager has ever come up with. But the thing is, I don't know if I like the twist or not. What I will say is that I just wasn't expecting the direction of this twist. I don't know how I feel about it. Like, I really don't know how I feel about it. I feel like, arguably, it was an interesting twist. I feel like there were twists on the twist, which I always really, really enjoy. I felt like it was interesting, but I just don't feel like this is like maybe a new all-time favorite thriller. I don't think it was bad either though. Remember, this is about Casey. Casey is an actress and she is going to stay in her lake house. She's kind of trying to recover from alcoholism. She's really, really upset about her husband's death. And then one day she sees that the couple across the lake are acting very, very sketchy and she is worried for the wife. I'm sitting at like a 3.5 right now because I don't think it was bad and I thought the twist was interesting, but I'm not entirely sure it was just like what I wanted from the story, but it was interesting. I will give Riley Sager that. It was interesting and it was well done. So I have really been enjoying reading like these more chunky novels, like My Best Friend's Exorcism and also The House Across the Lake. But today I really, really wanna try making up for my lack of reading with reading two smaller books. So today I will be focusing on Woman Eating by Claire Coda and also I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. The reason I'm picking this one up first is because this is not spooky. This is like literary fiction and apparently it's also sad girl fiction and I'm gonna be honest with you, while I'm not entirely sure like my overall feelings on this book, I will say it scared the absolute it out of me. I would say that this book in a lot of ways was actually scarier than this book because I don't know if anyone else feels the same way, but it's kind of like with romance too. When things in romance books are really laid out in like detailed ways, I don't think it's as sexy as like when like certain things are like hinted at. Do you know what I mean? And like left more to the imagination. That's just me. That's not a lot of readers, but that's just me. It's kind of the same thing with scary books. The more graphic the scary scene is, the more I'm like, oh, Okay, the more it's like someone might be in your house, I'm like, oh shit, that's terrifying. Do you know what I mean? I will say after reading this book and then reading this book, I'm just, I think, I think I need to be done with super, super scary things for like a millisecond. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. I'm hoping that this kind of stays within the same spooky genre kind of because we're learning about a vampire, but it's gonna be a totally different theme and different feel. This is literary fiction. It's not supposed to be scary. It's supposed to be slower paced, but it's also fairly short. I did kind of start this yesterday. I'm on page 67. We're actually following a girl named Lydia and Lydia is a vampire and she has just put her mother in a nursing home and we're just kind of following her. She's an artist and she's trying to find her way and make her way in London as an independent woman. So far, it's interesting. I would say it's very slow paced. I've heard from so many people that like not a lot happens, but I enjoy books like that. So when really nothing is happening, I'm like, oh wow. They're, they were right. And the other one I'm picking up really because of you guys. I mentioned this in my mood TBR and this book as well as the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, those were like two of some of the most popular books that a lot of people wanted me to read. So the goal today is to try to get back on track with reading, with trying to read these two things. But also I thought it would be kind of fun to break up the week and go book shopping. Listen, it's not that I wanted to go book shopping. It's that I need to go book shopping for summer ween. 
you know? And I feel like that's understandable. Like summer ween demands that I go book shopping. Today, I think we're going to go to two different bookstores. We're actually gonna go to my favorite bookstore called McKay's, which is a used bookstore. And then we're gonna go to Barnes & Noble. I do have a favorite bookstore downtown as well, but I'm not sure if I'm going to go there because I think it's supposed to rain later. And I hate driving in the rain. I'm also craving boba. So I feel like we need to go and get some bubble tea. I think that's pretty much it for the update. So having said all that, let's go book shopping. You guys look. Here we are. Wait, why was I singing the Miss America song? I don't know. It's beautiful. There she is. I would zoom in, but this is literally as far as it goes. So cool, cool, cool. Also, what are with those clouds? Don't rain on my parade. Get out of here. The first book I really, really want to get is we Were Once Dragons or something. I don't remember the name, but somebody recommended it to me. And it sounds good, and I know it's around here. Ooh, what's this? Hmm. You guys, look at how many copies of Song of Achilles there are. I have, I have never seen that before. This looks really cute. I have heard such good things about this book, so I think I might get this one. Hi friends, okay, I just got back from Barnes and Noble and surprisingly, I didn't really find as many books as I thought I would find, which is kind of surprising because I feel like I can always find books. I did find two and I will show you those when I got home, but I also really, really wanted to try this boba place in the mall. I think it's called Bubbles and Waffles, but it was seriously like the cutest place and they had so many flavors that I really, really wanted to try. But I decided to try a Thai tea with some boba and so I thought I would try it now and tell you how it tastes. Here we go. Okay, that's, it's like, the, it's so good. So now I am at McKay's. It looks like they're doing construction to McKay's, but it does still seem open. So I'm gonna go in. It looks really, really busy, actually. I don't know how much I'll be able to vlog, um, but I'm really, really excited. Hopefully I can find a couple good deals. And I'm gonna continue to drink my delicious boba. Cheers. I don't know why, but it feels cooler going in like this. Like, I hope they keep the tunnel. Doesn't it seem like we're going on an adventure? A scary one, maybe, but hey, I'm into it. Okay. There's not really anything that I am specifically looking for, but we're in YA. I didn't know this was YA. It's a good book. Maybe I should go to middle grade. Oh my god. This is why I need to remember to come to McKay's. Look, I could have bought one of these totally brand new. Like, these have not even been read. That's so good. I'm really torn with this one because I don't know if I'd ever be brave enough to read it, but this one's brand new for $15. And it literally looks brand new. I don't know. I wasn't actually going to read Ready Player Two because it's gotten really bad reviews, but it's brand new. So I don't know. Hello friends. Okay, I just got back from the bookstores and I've got my boba. It's like melted because it is freaking hot here. So I've got all of the books here, by the way, if you're looking for a dark academia tote book bag thing, I will link where I got mine. Isn't this so freaking cute? So I ended up getting two books from Barnes and Noble and then I think either three or four from McKay's. So not a lot, but like I really, really love what I got. Okay, so the very first book that I got from Barnes and Noble is Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. So all I know about this is that this is an adult fantasy book and it's about a group of women, I think who become besties when they're girls and they all like pledge an oath to this coven of witches and the coven basically is protecting her royal majesty. And then like years and years later, somebody is trying to destroy the coven or something like that. It says on the back, a young warlock of extraordinary capabilities has been captured by the authorities and seems to threaten the very existence of her majesty's royal coven. And then it says, with conflicting beliefs over the best course of action, the four friends must decide where their loyalties lie with preserving tradition or doing what is right. Okay, and then the next thing is huge. <laughs> The next thing, I finally got Brandon Sanderson's The Way of Kings. Look at this, L look at this, look, oh my God. How many pages is this? Oh, it's got maps, cool. 1,007 pages. I don't know anything about this, but 
I loved Brandon Sanderson's book, Mistborn, last year, and my goal slash plan is to read those other two books, I think in the fall, and then I wanna pick this up in November and December and just devour it. I have so much faith in Brandon Sanderson as an author, like he is just so talented. So I bought this because I've heard from so many people that this is like his best work, and I just can't, I, I, I can't wait to like pick it up and read it and learn all about it. Okay, let's now dive into what I got from McKay's. So I got four books. The first book I got was a freaking dollar, can you believe? Um, and that is The House with a Clock in Its Walls. It's got this very ugly sticker on it. Special value, $4, final price. Joke's on you, because the final price was actually a dollar. I'm assuming it's that cheap because it has like the actor's faces on it, but again, joke's on you, I would pay double for Jack Black's face on a book. You know what I'm saying? It says TikTok, a murderous clock. It's about Lewis, who is an orphan, and he comes to stay with his uncle Jonathan, and he expects to meet an ordinary person, but once he is there, he realizes that they are all magical, and it's just about him with his uncle learning about magic. I think it's like scarier and darker than that. I first heard about this from the trailer. Um, the trailer looks amazing. I don't think the movie got very much hype. Like, I don't know if it did very well or not, but I really, really wanna read this, and then I really, really wanna watch the movie. Excited. Next up, I got The Bone Garden, and this is by Heather Kasner. All of the books that I got from McKay's, by the way, they're all middle grade which we like love to see. It just sounds really, really intriguing. It's about a girl apparently who is put together by bone and like bone dust and she lives on the underside of a graveyard. Um, and it says down below in the underside of the graveyard, the bone garden hums with magic, mystery, and dark imaginings. Amazing. The next book is a book that I've already read. It's called I Coriander and this is by Sally Gardner. So I read this book a very, very, very long time ago. I think I wanna, I wanna say like I read this when I was like 15 or 16, I wanna say. All I remember is like falling in love with how creepy and scary and atmospheric this was. I honestly don't remember a lot. It's about a girl named Coriander and her mom passes away and her new mother really wants to stamp out all of the magic in her life. And she basically tries to tell Coriander that like all of the fairy tales and things like are evil. I think she ends up going into another world. And I, I remember thinking it was really cool, but that's it. And then my dog Gemma actually ended up eating. <laughs> this book and I've just never seen this in bookstores or anything since. So when I saw this for $4, I was like, it's fate. I Coriander was always meant to be in my collection. And then the final book is a book that has been getting so much praise like on the back, but I honestly don't think I've heard of it before. It has a starred review from ALA book list. It has a starred review from School Library Journal. It has a starred review from Publishers Weekly, and it also has a starred review from Kirkus Reviews. That does not happen. Why haven't I picked this up? This is called Miss Elliot's School for the Magically Minded, and this is by Sage Blackwood. The cover is so freaking cute. It looks so magical. This is following a bunch of girls who go to this magical school and then one day their headmistress, Miss Elliot, disappears. There's no magic to protect the city and the fearsome marauders threaten the lives of everyone that these girls care about. And so I think they have to try to protect the city and possibly find their headmistress. I don't know. So that's it as far as my little mini book haul. But you know what I thought would be kind of fun is since I just purchased six new books, we have a neighborhood free little library. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to go through my shelves and try to pick out a couple and then go to the free little library and add some. Since I was lucky enough to buy these, uh, yeah, it'd be nice to kind of give away a couple of mine too. So let's pick out some books that we can donate to the little library. I think the first one can be this one, Trust Exercise. I bought this like three years ago and honestly, I just, I never want to pick it up. So maybe somebody else will like it. Next up, I was very, very kindly sent the proof to a spindle splintered, but I also bought the like hard copy to support the author. So we can obviously say goodbye to the proof. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I actually have two copies of the Paris apartment. One that was very kindly, I think, sent to me, and then another one that came in my book of the month box. So since I have two of these, I think I can say goodbye. 
Okay, this one is a no-brainer. I just like did not connect with this book. I don't think it's bad. I just did not connect with this. So this can go in the free library. Somebody else will appreciate this and they deserve to have it. They deserve to have it because they'll appreciate it. You know, I don't know if I'm actually gonna read this. I got this in a fairy loot box two years ago, three years ago, and it looks so cool, but I've had it for two years and I've never like felt the desire to pick it up. So I think I'm also going to donate this one. And then this book was so kindly gifted to me. It was so kindly gifted to me by a subscriber and I liked it, but I don't think I loved it. So I think I'd like to pass it along to somebody else as well. Um, so that hopefully if they end up loving it, they can, you know, keep it and read it and cherish it. And then last, I bought this book years ago. I've never read it. I've had this book for over 10 years. I don't know if I'm ever going to read it. So I think I should probably give it away to someone who's going to appreciate it. Okay, so this is the little library and here are all the books. Okay, so I think I might sort through these and like arrange them really quick and then I'll add mine. Yes. Okay, <laughs> I tried to straighten them up a little. Now I wish that I had brought more. I like added like half of what was already there so that makes me feel so good done okay I just put my books in the little library I didn't realize that like the sharing library was so small it kind of makes me want to fill this up even more hopefully somebody finds a new favorite book out of the stack that I brought I don't know which book I'm gonna pick up I'm leaning towards I'm thinking of ending things just because it would be so cool to watch the Netflix adaptation so I think I might do that yeah so let's go home and let's start that book next. Hello besties. So you know how I had a rule that I wanted to stop every single vlog like right at nine? It's almost 11. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. I would be asleep or like about to be asleep regularly like in an, a normal day because I go to sleep really really early but I really really wanted to read a little bit more tonight and push myself not to like catch up but just to make sure that I was you know I felt good about like the progress I had been making in the readathon and so I ended up reading half of Woman Eating and then I read the entirety of I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reed. I'm going to review this book right now because I literally just finished this book. First of all, I would say objectively, the writing is a five out of five star. I think if you are interested in horror, if you are interested in something scary, um, and if you're interested in like very unique plot twists and things like that. This is this is definitely, I think, a really, really good option for you. Having said that, I, I would like to disclaim, disclose a disclaimer. My enjoyment, like my personal enjoyment for this book was a one star. I could not have enjoyed this less. I can objectively say that the writing was truly terrifying. It was really, really well written and it was extremely clever. And it is always somewhat enjoyable to read a book that you know is nailing all of these really, really difficult things. And I feel like Ian Reed did that. I'm gonna try to explain why my enjoyment for this book was so low when my enjoyment for something like this was so high. And I think the reason is actually in this book. There was a quote in here that I thought was so brilliant that I think I marked it. Okay, yeah, so this is like the perfect quote of why this was so terrifying and also more scary than maybe like something like this. It's funny because I kind of said something like this in the beginning of this particular vlog. And it's so interesting that that sentiment is like echoed and like emphasized with this right now. But you know how I was saying things that are scary are a little bit like things that are romantic. When I'm personally reading a romance, I don't like it to be necessarily super detailed in like the sexy times. It's kind of the same thing with scare factors. This was was like very graphic. <laughs> It was very scary. There was lots of body horror in here. There were terrifying images, but because it was like so detailed, you almost like became desensitized to it. And it, it almost like 
it just became statement, like part of the story. And it wasn't that scary. And then you could get on to like the deeper meaning of the story, which was about the friendship and the relationships in this particular book, which is why I liked it so much because it was scary, but it really wasn't as scary as I would say, like the Riley Sager book, which was terrifying because while it couldn't like necessarily happen, like seeing domestic abusive relationships and things like that and you know possibly having things in your house and that's terrifying but that could happen and like just leaving it a little bit up to the imagination of like is someone in the house are they not to me that's scarier than just like downright saying like all of these horrible things that are happening and ian reed I think says this so perfectly on page 172. Before right now, before this, before tonight, when anyone asked me about the scariest thing that has ever happened to me, I told them the same story. So there's like this story that um, our main character is like talking about. Most people I tell don't find this story scary. They seem bored, almost disappointed when I get to the end. My story is not like a movie. I'll say it's not heart stopping or intense or blood curdling or graphic or violent. No no jump scares. To me, these qualities aren't usually scary. Something that distorts, that unsettles, what's taken for granted, something that disturbs and disrupts reality, that's scary. And I absolutely agree with that. And that is why this book is, I'm just gonna say it, like the scariest thing that I've ever read. Um, I enjoy reading thrillers. I enjoy reading horror now. This was an unpleasant experience. But I wanna say that it shows how good of a writer Ian Reed is for doing that because the reason this was scary is because it essentially seemed like a normal night where little tiny things were off, like a glitch in the matrix. And it was just enough to where the main character was like, that seems unusual, but also it's fine. And like there were these little icky details, like her biting her nails when she hadn't realized that she had been biting her nails the whole night or like recognizing photographs, but that's not possible. Or like just like little things where she wasn't in control of the night, you know, she wasn't the driver. And so like she had no control over, are they staying here for the night? Are, where are they going? Why are they stopping? It's very difficult to explain, but essentially, what this book nails is a feeling of claustrophobia. When you're reading this, you almost feel suffocated, like somebody is sitting on your chest. And the more you read, the more you just want it over with. I was listening to the audiobook and I actually had to stop. A great suggestion to the person who said to pair it with the audiobook because the audiobook made those feelings of claustrophobia intensified. Like if you're looking for a very, very intense horror reading uh, experience, I think that that was a great suggestion. All of the suggestions from people saying like, pick this up. It's like, unlike anything I've ever read, you were right. I don't regret reading this at all because it was, in my opinion, masterfully done as far as like the feelings it evokes. But would I say that this was like one of the most unpleasant reading experiences I've ever had? Yes. The character feels like she's not in control and she feels this like panic at not understanding why there are weird things happening and like is she reading too much into it or is she not and then the plot twist at the end plot twist at the end you know was creepy but like what was really creepy was the feeling of like dread and unease throughout the book like steeped into the book i think that this would be a really really good recommendation and i could see recommending it to people on my channel i don't think it's like the scariest a book in the whole entire world i don't think there's anything bad in this i think that people People could read it if they were interested in the genre. However, I personally really did not enjoy my experience. Okay, so that is how I feel about this book. I'm glad I read it. I'm glad I understand the hype. I don't want to see the Netflix adaptation. Um, I've heard that they're really, really different. I just... <laughs> I'm ready to put this story to rest. I think I'm I think I'm gonna say goodbye to my copy as well. And then as far as woman eating, this is like a polar opposite. If this is the scariest book I've ever read, this might be the most boring book I've ever read. I am not saying that this is bad. Actually, I'm quite enjoying a lot of the conversations on here about identity and how loss of identity and erasure of your identity can really have like lasting impacts. Again, these are all like metaphors that I think I'm picking up on. Our main character, Lydia, is really struggling with embracing her vampire half. We're also getting a lot of comparisons of her background. She is half Japanese. Her mom is from Malaysia, but also I'm pretty sure she's British as well. We have a lot of
lot of conversation so far on how her mother, like Lydia's mother, really, really thought that they deserved to be punished because they were vampires and how she was constantly trying to like wash that clean of her daughter and um, how her daughter was impure because of this, even though like it wasn't her daughter's fault. She was literally turned as a baby from her mother. I think there's also like a lot of conversations about like food and how our relationship with food can be such a big relationship that I think a lot of people kind of glaze over. Lydia is always constantly fantasizing about eating human food, even though she can't. And she's constantly like trying to go as long as she can without having blood. And it seems almost like in comparison to an eating disorder. And so a lot of the conversations in here, I think are really well done and fascinating to me. But for some reason, it's just, it's kind of boring. Like it feels very monotone. I really, really wanna try reading this one tomorrow and then hopefully finishing another book tomorrow as well. But I have to be honest with you, after tomorrow, I am definitely taking a little bit of a break from thrillers. I'm starting to get creeped out. I think I need some middle grade in my life. But I think you guys, that is it. Those are all of my thoughts for day number six. Sorry again that I didn't vlog for four and five, but I will see you probably in a couple of days with my final vlog for Summerween, which will be tomorrow. Hello friends and welcome to the final day of Summerween. So I've decided to just kind of put this day attached to the other days because I ended up not vlogging on the last day of Summerween. I ended up getting like a little sick, not like really sick, but sort of like cold symptoms and then it kind of went away. That happens to me sometimes when I like burn out or when I work really, really hard on like a paper, my immune system just was like, no. <laughs> so I ended up not doing anything aside from like staying in bed for a couple of days and reading. So I did finish another book and that book was The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I couldn't decide what book I wanted to read for like the final day, but I ended up going with this one because so many of you guys said that I would love it and I'm so glad that I read it because it was so good. It was like, it was incredible. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a recap of all of the books that I read for this readathon and then I will rank them. So on day one, I started My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix, which is adult horror about two besties and one of them gets possessed and the power of the 80s and friendship essentially helps with the exorcism. This book blew my mind. I was not expecting to love it so much. It has my whole heart. I think it's the best scary book I've ever read in my entire life. Not only was it scary, but it was also emotional and touching, which I was not expecting. I ended up finishing that one on the second day. And then over the weekend, I picked up The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. And this was the book that I mostly listened to for my weekend reset, which was really, really nice. And I'm still kind of undecided on my feelings of this book. I feel like the plot twist was incredibly original and really, really interesting. I felt like it was really, really well written, but I'm not sure if this is going to be like one of my favorite thrillers of all time. Again, we're following Casey and Casey's husband has just passed away and she is sort of trying to recover from alcoholism and she's staying at her family's lake house in Vermont when she notices the couple across the lake seems a little bit sketchy. And one thing I will say, you are not going to guess the ending of this. I do not think you're gonna guess the ending of this. Then I was feeling a little bit burnt out, um, but I tried to read two books in a day. I ended up only succeeding in finishing this book, which I still stand by. Objectively is a five stars and arguably is the most scary book that I've personally ever read in my entire life. I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid is adult psychological horror. And we are following the perspective of the girlfriend who is going back to, I guess, meet her boyfriend's parents. What really I think makes this book terrifying are all of the little details of like biting nails and certain like skin getting scratched too hard and how the protagonist really feels trapped and she doesn't really feel like she has any control over the night and she feels kind of helpless, but she doesn't really understand why she feels helpless because she's just going to a dinner. I think this is going to be a lot of people's favorite books. I think that objectively it was five out of five stars, but if you're like me and you get really claustrophobic easily and you have anxiety, 
you're gonna hate it, but you're not gonna hate it because it's bad. You're gonna hate it because it's truly terrifying. Then I did end up reading quite a bit of Woman Eating, and this is by Claire Coda, and I'm currently on page 147 out of 233. So I'm pretty close to finishing this book. I will say a few things on this. Number one, I feel like if you are a person who really likes introspective characters and stories about women who are kind of like trying to sort out their lives and, and maybe it's kind of like a trying to figure out who you are story, I think you might want to pick this up. I feel like the writing in it is really, really beautiful, but I would say that this is a very slow story and a very quiet story. I love stories that are quiet and slow, but for some reason, I'm not really connecting to it. It is not a bad book by any means. The idea of following a woman who is a vampire, but really she's just trying to figure out her way in life is so beautiful to me. And the symbolism in this book is so like on point in my opinion. I'm excited to finish it. I would say if I had to guess, I'm probably going to give it a three star. And then finally, we have this book. This is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. And this book was also completely terrifying. But what Summer Wayne has taught me is that evidently I am interested in horror now. So who knew? So I have not talked about this book. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to kind of talk about this book a little bit more. So this book takes place in the late 80s and then also in the 90s. And it takes place over the spans of multiple years. And it's really fantastic because we get to see the progression of all of these women's relationships and friendships with each other. Our main protagonist's name is Patricia and Patricia is sort of low key unhappy in her marriage, but she's also really content because she loves being a mother and a housewife. The book opens up with essentially her and her friends leaving one book club and then starting another. And the book club that they are participating in is a book club where they study true crime. And then, you know, one day a vampire moves in and our story kind of like jumps off from there. So I have a couple of things that I want to say about this book. The first is that this was way more terrifying to me than I actually thought it was going to be. And here's why. I love books about monsters, werewolves and vampires and just like random monsters from the swamp. But because I love that so much, I am not really necessarily scared of monsters and things. But this particular monster, the vampire, was incredibly scary. And the reason is because Grady Hendrix sort of models him after a serial killer. He even says in the beginning, like, I basically wanted to create a vampire, but I wanted him to feel like a serial killer. And that does scare me. Vampires don't scare me because like, listen, we, we all loved Edward Cullen, but like, I'm not afraid of Edward Cullen. Like he's, he's probably not going to show up, you know? And so I think that's another reason why monsters don't scare me so much is because they're kind of removed. Like they might exist, they might not, but you know what does exist? Is scary people. And I absolutely say this with my whole chest, monsters don't scare me, but people scare me. And like, this is really important that I say, so many people commented this and tried to warn me. Thank you for doing that. I had just never really associated this book with this topic, but it is such a huge topic and like part of this book. And it was extremely hard to get through in some points, like very difficult to get through because the vampire in here isn't just like, like a serial killer. The symbolism is so unbelievably strong. He is abusing children. Okay, but like in like but like in a bad way. Like I can't say it on my channel or I I will get demonetized, but do you know what I'm saying? He is abusing children in a really gross, gross, gross way. Do you understand what I'm saying? I hope you understand what I'm saying. I actually almost DNF the book. One of the scenes made me feel so sick to my stomach that I thought I was going to be physically ill. I was like, oh my God, because he describes what he's doing with a kid. And I'm like, I can't read it. I, can, I can't read it. I ended up finishing it and I have to tell you, it was so incredibly emotionally impactful. This group of women put their lives on the line because they were like, no one is going to mess with our kids. Like it does not matter if we die trying, we will save these children from this horrible, horrible, disgusting monster. The emotional impact of all of these women who don't know how to fight, who, who know nothing about monsters, who know nothing about vampires, who are scared, who are just normal people coming together and saying, you are not gonna hurt our children, was so unbelievably touching 
that I cried. Like I, I literally cried. I thought it was so beautiful. It was horror done so perfectly because there is nothing scarier than this disgusting monster in this book. There is nothing scarier. There's nothing more evil. The symbolism is is so blatant that that's what's happening that you just feel sick to your stomach. So if you are sensitive to that at all, just be really, really cautious going into this book. Having said that, it was incredible. I would give this probably like a four, well, okay, objectively, it's like a five star again. It was just really hard for me to enjoy parts of it, but I enjoyed the mom's kicking ass. You know what I mean? And it had like overall just like a feeling of hopefulness and it was really, really well done. So I'm going to say that I would give this like a 4.5 star, but like it deserves five out of five stars. I just feel like it was really triumphant and really inspiring and motivating and heartbreaking and scary. I recommend it, like I highly recommend it. I don't just recommend it a little, I highly recommend it. But you need to be really cautious and like understand the themes because even though it's just symbolic, you will fully understand what's going on. But I mean like hats off to Grady Hendrix. He wrote a despicable monster. You will not fall in love with this vampire. You will want to smash his face in. I was ready to fight. I was like, put me in Patricia, put me in. Okay, so now let's go ahead and rank all of the books in order of my enjoyment. So at the bottom is going to be, I'm thinking of ending things by Ian Reed. Next up, I, I feel like I shouldn't rank this because I haven't finished this, but if I was ranking it now, even though I have like 100 pages left, I would probably say that this is fourth. Next up is going to be The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. Next up, we're going to go with The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I loved it, I highly recommend it, but just again, be cautious. Finally, my favorite book, not only of this readathon, but like it's going to be in my favorite books for the year is My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. Also, I do just wanna say that this book was so disgusting. <laughs> I wanna stress that because so many of you are like, oh, I'm picking it up now. This is gross. Like there is so much gross, icky things that happen in here that I said that weird, but there's like so many icky, gross things that happen in here. So if you don't like gross, icky, gory things, I mean, this might not be the book for you, but the story in it was just so fire. So these are all of the books that I read. I feel pretty pretty good about that. I, well, I shouldn't count this one. <laughs> I almost finished this one. I did finish four books though. I feel pretty good about it. Sorry that I didn't actually daily vlog you guys. I can do daily vlogs if they are pre-filmed, but like the next time I tell you guys, I'm gonna daily vlog in real time. You tell me no, you tell me no. You, you say, Lexi, remember Vlogmas? And then you say, Lexi, do you remember Summerween? And I'll go, you're right. But I think that's it you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I had the best time filming for Summer Ween. I'm also going to link down below a ton of Summer Ween vlogs. You need to check out Gabby's. You need to check out Liv's. You need to check out Kayla's and Gavin's. Gavin's are so good. Gavin had like such a good take. He basically read like booktube's worst thrillers for Summer Ween and I thought it was so good. I also thought it was interesting because I feel like so many people interpreted Summer Ween the way they wanted to, which was really, really fun. I don't think I did any of the prompts. I don't think I finished any of the prompts, hold on. So prompt number one, read a book in the dark or at night. I think objectively I read every single book at night. So I'm going to say yes, because I did. I just didn't finish a book exclusively at night. I didn't read The Cursed Carnival. I guess that's something that I will read this October. And number two, read a book with Halloween colors on the cover. I wanna say this one, but I didn't finish this one, so I don't think I can use that. This one, you know what? Those peaches, they look like pumpkins, black and black and orange, That I did that one. Read a book with haunt in the title. I know I didn't do that. I know I did not do that. Read a slasher. I mean, like a lot of people People died in this. Okay, it's not a traditional slasher, but we do have a serial killer in here who is under the guise basically of a vampire. He kills a lot of people, there's a lot of blood. It's I know that this doesn't count. I know this is not what they meant when they said slasher. I'm gonna count it. And then bake or make a treat with your I didn't do that. Oh god. Okay, so I did three out of the five. That's not too bad, right? 
Yeah, sure, right, okay. If you've made it to this part of the vlog, leave me some kind of summerween themed emoji, but I'll like, I'll leave it to you. Anything that you think is kind of scary. It could be like a knife, it could be like a pumpkin, it can be like, I don't know, anything you want. But yeah, I think that's it. So until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Always think of you when spring comes Like it's something in the air at that time Don't know why Always dream of you when spring comes It's like the heat on my skin takes me back to the time Met you